Um, okay. So do you mind if I pray for us? Yeah, let's do it. All right, let me pray. Uh, Lord, thank you for this this afternoon and giving us this day. Thank you for Adi and the gifts and talents you've given her and for bringing her here at this church, even to Ottawa for the time being. And I ask that you continue to direct her and the steps that you're uh, wanting her to take. Be at this conversation and let it uh, impact those that you want it to. We love you in your name. Amen. Amen. So tell me about Adi. Who is Adi? Tell me what got you in the music and a little bit about you. So I've been playing, I started off like playing this like super cheap keyboard that I got when I was like six and I was able to pick up stuff that I heard like off the radio and my parents thought it would be super cool if they put me in piano lessons. So um, I took piano lessons from this one lady at our, our church and that was in um, Albuquerque, New Mexico and so yeah. I started learning there and I started learning how to read music. And then we moved to Michigan and I had a teacher in Michigan who was, um, she was like an opera um, director and yeah. she was super smart with music. And I remember the first piano lesson I had, she was like, she put this song in front of me and then she played it for me and I played it exactly the way she played it. And she was like, okay, you can play it by ear. Uh, and I was like, cool. yeah. Yeah. So she would always be super strict with me um, and force me to read music instead of hearing it. So she wouldn't play anything for me anymore. Oh, that punk. Yeah. So it it helped me um, learn more about, you know, songs that were written. And that's kind of how I was able to figure out like a rhythm for yeah. the songs that I write now is by being able to read other people's music um, and not being able just to hear it. But um Then after that, we moved to Arizona and we've been here for a while. And um, I had a Mormon piano teacher Mm -hmm. and she played for like the temple and everything. So um, she taught me a lot about hymns and how to play hymns like correct out of the hymn book because they play a lot of favorite hymns. I do. um, I like I Surrender All. Mm -hmm. I Surrender All. Yes. That's. Yeah. That's one of my favorites. Okay. All right. So um, we had a Mormon uh, piano teacher kind of explain it to you a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Bring, yeah. Even though she was Mormon, she actually got into the depth about like all the hymns. So I was able oh. to like learn about that, yeah. which was pretty cool. And then um, I started kind of songwriting from there. Um, but it was just music because I had a hard time putting words to music. Okay. Um. And then I, it would just be like medleys. We did like this is Disney one and I made like a Beauty and a Beast medley with like all their songs and stuff. And then um, after that, I just kind of like put words to music just just for fun and stuff. And then I came to Ottawa and I was homeschooled my whole life until senior year. And wow. I got to go to yeah, I got to go to the public school here for like a class and then my parents put me in dual enrollment to get all my 100 credits done and so um I was just really confused in junior senior year and I was going behind my parents like you know figuring out the world yeah, stuff right. and I, I wanted to try everything like yeah. I wanted to do everything I possibly could so um I learned the hard way by doing a lot of things. And then I came to Ottawa and I had no parents, no supervision. And I kind of went wild for a little bit. (laughs) And I hung out with a lot of, um, wrong people. Um, I have all brothers at home, so I don't enjoy drama. And so I chose to hang out with, you know, I chose out to hang out with a lot of guys at Ottawa who, you know, um, they just reminded me of brothers. And so I was just doing all the things they were doing. And, um, it was just, it was a moment where I didn't, I wasn't close to God at all. And I didn't want anything to do with him. And I questioned him a lot. And I was just like, let me live my life and just trying to find my identity. And I struggled a lot with identity because, um, I was, you know, everyone's judged and I don't like when other people judge me. So I was just, pleasing my flesh at that time. Yeah. Um, and then I went to my first spirit life at Ottawa okay. and they posted on Instagram that they needed um, musicians. And so I hit up Alan and I was like, 
um, I told him I could play the piano and I could sing. And then um, I, I played the next Spirit Life. And um, I'm not going to not, I, I was playing just to play, you know, I wasn't playing for Jesus. I was going to Spirit Life just to play because it was something that I really liked to do. And then I was able to sing and people were like, wow, you have a really good voice and stuff. And, um, and then during that period, I was just filling all my classes and um, I ended up getting, uh, I had a meeting with one of my professors and his name was Dr. Davini. And he saw my struggles and he saw everything I was going through at that time. And um, it was just a difficult time because I was, I went to play beach volleyball and um, my coaches saw I was struggling and I broke a lot of the rules. So I wasn't able to play. And so I would just go to practice and sit there and just be mad at everybody. And I didn't talk to anyone on my team and I didn't care about anything they were going through. And I was just like focused. I was just selfish. Yeah. And so anywho, um, I had that meeting with my professor and he asked me what I really like to do. And I was like, well, the only thing that I really enjoy right now is spirit life. I like to play with them and I like to sing with them. And he's like, okay. And he's like, so here's what I want you to do. He's like, I want you to write a song. And if you write a song and you sing it at Spirit Life, then I will give you an A in my class. Dang, so this guy's pretty bold to trust you with writing a song and, and yeah. performing in front of people. Yeah, so wow. he had a lot of faith in me for some reason. And I was like, okay. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'll get the A. So I wrote, I went, I went back to my dorm and... I just kind of, I just kind of thought about it for a little bit. And then I had like, I had like a dream that night and it was like, it was just like, I was just terrified and I woke up and I was super sweaty and I was like, you know what? I was like, yeah, yep. Hence the lyrics. Hence the first part of the lyrics. (laughs) Yeah. So then next day, it wasn't even next day. It was like two o'clock. Yeah. Next day, two o'clock in the morning, I got up and, um, I like just played, I had a little keyboard in there. And so I like, I played a little tune on there and I was like, and then I put the first part of the lyrics together and then it just kind of all came after that. And I was like, and at that moment, I just felt like Jesus speaking to me mm. and, um, you know, like I was, I understood that I was there for a reason and that everything I went through was my choice, but there's a way out. And, um, he wasn't like, he wasn't going to zap me with his powers because I went astray. And um, then I started attending, attending Radiant and I learned that the Apostle Paul was depressed through his whole, his whole mission. Um, and I was like, well, I'm not alone. And um, when Jesus died for us, he felt everything we feel. And that's why he was so in so much agony because he had to take on the pain of the entire world and he came down and he humbled himself as a king because he loved us so much. And um, I was just like, I just want to be an example of him because I know in our time and age, it's so much different than the generations before. And everyone's so sensitive now. Yeah. Um, and like, it's just like, and like, he never promises us it's going to get better right. and it's just going to get worse. And I feel like it's getting worse. Like it's already gotten worse, you know, with COVID and everything, but it's just little by little, everything's just de- deteriorating. Like the second law of thermodynamics, like, and you know, our brains are just getting I weaker on, and weaker. I just caught on that in youth group, by the way. Oh, really? I did. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. So that's just like started hitting me. And then I was like, like my parents are super faithful at church and they're very, about Christians and um I know a lot of Bible and I've known that like I've soaked it up and being homeschooled like they made sure that they put that yeah. in my mind and so um even though I went astray I was able to have a strong foundation and be able to come back to him and I want to be an example to those who don't know who think that God is a God of hate right. um why did I you- want them to understand why did you think? What was that? Why did you think he was a guy to hate? Did you ever think that? Yes, yes, and that's why I didn't want anything to do with him because I was why, like, you know what? Do he doesn't want me to have fun. Why do you think? So, um, <laughs> okay, so I'm not, I'm not gonna try to bash any churches, but you know, there's churches with stricter rules than others, yeah. and 
all Christians have their faults. All Christians have, um, you know, they have that one thing that, you know, Satan uses to, to, you know, to target them with. And I feel like I, I was brought up in a Baptist church. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of rules. There's like, they have strong convictions and, and the dress and what you say and how you look and, you know, tattoos and piercings and stuff like that. And, um, you know, I was just like, if God's like them, then I don't want to serve God like him. Yeah. Like, which kind of sounds bad, but like, uh, it was kind of more. I those exact words. I said those exact words. So I know. I know what you're talking about. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and I feel like they put the rules above the relationship with Jesus. Yeah. And I feel like they just cherish the the law. They just cherish the law instead of um, Grace. maybe understanding Yes, understanding other people, where they're coming from, because not everyone's like them. Not everyone was brought up in church. Not everyone has a clear understanding of who God is. And as Christians, that's our, I, that's our, like, what separates us is from the world is our love, the love we share. And, like, what separates Christians from non-believers is that is not how we look, but it's who we are inside. And it's the idea that we can rise above our problems instead of sinking lower in them because we have Jesus on our side. And I feel like that message really wasn't clear enough as a child to me. You know, I feel like I had to do all these things to make Jesus happy. And I knew, I knew that was like, I knew we needed to do works because the Bible says that works do not get us into heaven. Works do not make our relationship with Jesus. But a lot of people think that a lot of people think that it's a workspace and that's, that's a big struggle for people. And so that's Mm -hmm. that's big that, that you say that uh, just because for some reason people think that they have to work. And they think that they're good enough to get there because of mm-hmm. the rules. But anyway, sorry to interrupt. But that, that's a hard no. thing to understand. So it's cool that that you that you say that because people need to be reminded of that. Like that's the amazing thing about God's grace. It has nothing to do with you. It's that everything mm-hmm. you can and what he did because we can't get there. So Exactly. Exactly. And um it's just everyone's different. Like we're all the same, but we're different. And what's crazy is like we're made in the image of God. That's what makes us different then the animals, anything else, you know, God made us in his image. And we have those, we have those commandments right in our heart. Like we have, we know the difference between right and wrong and stuff like that. And I feel like when we just put rules before God, it's like, that's your idol. You're making that your idol. And um, I just want people to be able to come to Jesus as they are, but understand that, he can help you with your sin. He can help you with your addiction. He can help you with your thoughts. He can help you with your anxiety, with your depression, with your thoughts of suicide. Like he, he helps you with all of that. And he promises it in the Bible and he like suicides in the Bible, anxiety, like there's people with anxiety in the Bible, people with depression. And um, I feel like now in our time and age, we just need to make that more clear to the people because there's, we're all struggling. And so, yeah. <laughs> so is, uh, I can easily go down rabbit rabbit trails. Just want you know, rabbit. Right. Trails. Yeah. Uh, but is suicide a big? Uh, is that a big part in your life? Um, it like was. Thoughts? It yes, the thoughts definitely, and I'm not even gonna lie. When I came home, even after coming home, um, there's just I'm the oldest at my house, so I have to set an example for my brothers and. With the choices that some of the choices I made, um, like I told my parents about all of them, and I feel like I was just such a disappointment, mm. I guess. And, um, you know, everyone, you know, um, like I said, we all have our issues, we all have our faults, and a big thing in our house is anger, I guess. Like, we all like got that gene of anger, and um, we struggle with it a lot. And we struggle with calling out our, each other's faults right, right, right. and just bashing each other. Like, even though we say we're, we, we go to church, like we come back, like, and we're just bashing each other for something we did wrong at church or something we did wrong at the house. And, and it's just like, it's not love at all. And I feel like um, being just in an environment of anger just makes you question yourself and makes you question the things that you do and, I always struggle with like, would it be better if I wasn't here, you know? And, um, which is a lie from Satan. And, um, he targets Christians more than he targets anybody else. Like 
I know that he targets everybody else. Like he wants to bring no, people I know down. I know, what you mean. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah. And like, I feel like, I feel so awful for pastors who are out there who, you know, nothing about their issues, you know, nothing about behind closed doors. And like, um, I feel like ever since I started getting into worship, <clears throat> that I've just been a bigger target, you know, for Satan to pull me down. And just like for the rest of you guys, I know you guys have your issues too, but he likes, he likes to pick at us. Yeah, and absolutely. it's light to see us fail and to see us give in sometimes, even though we're Christians and stuff like that. But yeah. So yeah. So for, um, like, you know, you were saying like, uh, sometimes it's hard to come as you are to Christ. It's hard to right. come as you are, even at some churches, you know, we put masks mm-hmm. on for sometimes and something that was unique about you that I could see some people looking at your song um, and, and seeing that it's dark, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you have some lyrics, like I was looking at some of the lyrics, like uh, when you say, uh, you know, you never fall asleep because there's nightmares in your head and the demons that are here, well, I, I let them in. And then suddenly I'm welcoming the thought of death. But, you know, that's those, are, that's those are dark lyrics, you know? And so where did that stimulate from? Was it the choices that you made? And was it guilt that you're feeling? Like, so, um, yeah, it, where did where did that start for you? Um, so, I believe in spiritual battle, just yeah. like, you know, like, you know, the Bible says to put on the full armor of God. Right. And, and there's so, there's so many, like, just demonic things going on around us that we can't see, but we can feel. Mm-hmm. And putting yourself in like let's say I like in the after okay I started praying the prayer to ask Jesus to make me feel uncomfortable in situations I shouldn't be in okay so like the temptation of suicide you know I asked God to make me feel uncomfortable with those thoughts um and before that you know I would just let those thoughts in and I know those thoughts are from the devil and um you know people put like celebrities put in songs like like there was this like one straight lyric from there's this rapper named little baby and he talks about like how demons hold him at night yeah and i'm like you know like whoa like and it's crazy because we like go to bed just feeling so depressed and i know being depressed isn't of god and i know that's from the devil so like that's kind of why i put that in my song because i chose to let them in i chose to let that negativity in my life and that's where the nightmares, that's where the nightmares come from. So, yeah. so I, that's, I, what I, that's why I like, I like the, the, I remember when I, when I first um, asked, it was Manny, uh, he's one of our worship guys. Um, I asked him to have you send, send your lyrics to him. Cause I was like, all right, mm-hmm. let me check these out. And right. what I liked about it was the realness of it. And that's what our youth mm-hmm. needs to hear too, is that it's okay to be real. It's okay to struggle. Cause that's normal. It's normal that you have struggles. The part where we fail as Christians is thinking we're supposed to have all the answers or have it all together. Life's perfect. I'm perfect. I don't have any struggles. That person does. Let's focus on them. But to hear from the stage, someone struggling with these thoughts, it doesn't get more transparent with that. And that that's what we're supposed to do as believers is come alongside each other and say, Hey, this is where I'm struggling in. I need help because the whole point mm-hmm. of Christianity isn't that uh, we have it all together. It's that we're broken that we need a savior. That's why we come to church is because we're broken Mm -hmm. and we admit that we don't have it all together. And sometimes we forget that. So when you say those lyrics, I like it because uh, it's real. That's how you feel. And people need to get used to hearing normal. Not a lot of people are. So I can also see the other side of it where people are going to be like, Oh my gosh, can't believe like she wrote that. But but to me that it's like, what are you looking for from someone that's being transparent? Mm -hmm. King David with all the the songs that he wrote in Psalm and uh, he talks about, you know, where he has a hard time sleeping and he talks about depression. He talks about anxiety. He talks about wanting to kill his enemies, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, the thing about David is he had such an authentic relationship with the Lord. In, and he was known as a man as, of God's heart. One of my favorite uh, songs that he talks about, he says, God, if I've done anything wrong, if I've wronged anyone, you can kill me. Now, I cannot mm-hmm. pray that because there's stuff that I've done wrong that I, I like. Maybe I've even forgotten stuff I did. And so I would be dead. But his relationship with God was so authentic and so real and so vulnerable mm-hmm. and transparent that God knew everything that he was going like He let God have it all. And so it's, it's, it's okay to, to let it out in the song. So I was just, uh, yeah, I was like, let me ask you about these lyrics because, um, 
it's, it's unique to hear that in a church, those, those, those specific words, but I'll tell you what, um, my youth students were so excited to, for your song to come out. Um, they kept asking about it. And so, you know, we were editing it and, you know, like, um, mixing the vocals. We had our, uh, some of our guys do mixing all, all the songs from that night. And so we, we wanted this one to be, you know, special and we wanted it to come out first, but we're like, you know, let's, let's build this up. And so, right. um, we get the whole time we drop one of them. They're like, Hey, when's Audie's song coming out? Hey, when's Audie's song coming out? When's oh my I, can't God. For, I can't wait for Audie's song. And, um, did you see one of the, the comments on YouTube was like, she's better than Adele. I thought that was pretty cool. Oh my cool. gosh, no. That was, that so was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Um, oh. Now, uh, how are you? Are, are you and your brothers close? Yes, we are pretty close. Um, I have four younger brothers. Four? And they're, yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. Um, let me see. 116, 13, um, 11, and 6. Wow. So even though we're like all spread apart, um, we're pretty close. So uh, my goodness, yeah. four brothers. Yeah. <laughs> I, have, I have two brothers, but, uh, and I have two sons and I have a daughter, but, uh, man, I can't imagine four brothers. Well, when yeah, it's... they get even older, they'll beat up all your, your boyfriends and stuff for you. Gosh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know they're. Yeah, two of them are already bigger than me, so oh, <laughs> I don't mess. That's awesome. Um, yeah. There's something else I was going to say. Oh, so it was really cool to hear a little bit of your story. Um, from So when me and some of the guys here at our church, we, we would go into these spirit lives over there on Wednesdays. And um, our lead pastor here, Joshua, uh, he was like, hey, we got to get connected in Ottawa. Well, I've been coaching wrestling over there this year. And so I had kind of my foot in the door over there, just talking to some people. And uh, mm -hmm. so we're like, hey, let's go to Spirit Life. So people were like, I can meet and greet more people. And that specific Spirit Life, it was you and a couple other people. And uh, the song was playing, this worship song was playing. Oh, Noah Battles was on there. And uh, I mean, he's usually on there, but um, the song was playing. And then you had this one, you held a note, you held a specific note longer than anyone else did. They all dropped the song, but you kept hitting the note. And all of a sudden the, the students are like applauding for, for your voice. And I saw this little smirk come on your face. And I looked at our lead pastor and I was like, dang, dude, she's got some vocals. And I had Alex and Manny there, the guys on our worship team. And I was like, dang, she's got some pipes. And one of my wrestlers, uh, she told me, she's like, you got it. <laughs> she wrote this song. She wrote this song and you got to hear it brought, moved everyone to tears that were in. So, um, I was like, really, what's this song? So we started talking about that, but, um, so you played the song in, in chapel or spirit life at one point, how'd that go? And what, what did you tell, what did you tell OUAZ, uh, the story behind your song? Um, so I had one of my friends, um, he was a drummer at the time. We didn't have a drum set. Um, and he played the cajon. He played it with me. And he was probably one of my closest, closest friends at that time. But um, he just told me to be real with them. And he said, you know, be real about Jesus because this is who this is about. And let them know that Jesus helped you. And so I just told them that I know that coming to this school was um, a big step for everyone to take. And that we're all learning about ourselves. And we go through hard times but I wrote this song because Jesus helped me get out of those hard times. And I just got to say, cause I was super nervous. So I didn't say anything big, but that's yeah. basically what I said. And uh, they liked it. Apparently. Did you get an A? Yeah, I did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> that's cool. And yeah. <laughs> what are your parents? What do your parents think uh, of it? What the feedback they gave you? They like it a lot. Um, yeah. My mom loves it. And I, I know my dad loves it too. Um, they asked me to play in church at our church, um, in our little conservative church. But it, I was, I was kind of nervous too, but I played it in there and there's not a lot of people in there, but it moved a lot of, of the older people to tears too. So, so I'm yeah. going to, can I read you something? Um, yes. So I want to tell you what we're going to be teaching on. Uh, our lead pastor is going to teach on, um, this Sunday. Okay. 
Okay. I'm going to tell you what, what it's about. And I want you to think about how your song or your story, you can relate to this and how this song kind of uh, might be a good tie in for this message. Okay. Okay. About this. Um, so have you ever, uh, where am I? Just uh, watch on one. Hold on, hold on, hold on, young you're lady. Good. You're good. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, so Jesus, uh, he's on his way to go heal a girl that's dead. Uh, she or mm-hmm. she was dying. She was sick. But on his way there, uh, a woman touches him because she's been uh, bleeding for twelve years. And there was you're familiar with this passage. Mm-hmm. Okay. So this way he's gonna be teaching on this. It's in Mark uh, chapter five, and uh, this guy, uh, verse twenty th- or verse we'll say twenty twenty two. Then a leader of the local synagogue, whose name was Jairus, he arrived when he saw Jesus. He fell at his feet, pleading with him. He said, "My little daughter is dying." He said, "Come, lay your hands on her, heal her, so she can live." Jesus went with them. All the people followed, crowding around him. A woman in the crowd had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she gotten worse. Mm -hmm. She heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. Or she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I will be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stopped. And she could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Uh, so the focus is going to be on that, that woman, uh, that's been broken and she's been hurt. She's been, you know, had a problem that no doctors can heal except when she met and touched Jesus. So is there anything in your life or in this song that you can kind of tie into or relate to that part right there? Oh, okay. So, um, that story is really really interesting because you don't know anything about her anything else except that she had that um that issue um I just feel like I kind of like anyone can relate to that because she wasn't scared to go to Jesus Mm. like after like you know like the Pharisees put him down lots of people were talking smack about him Mm. like there was all kinds of rumors going on about Jesus and the guy who could kill people and somehow she heard about that and she was she got enough courage and she had enough strength in her body to move herself through all those people Mm. and she didn't care what anybody thought about her because she was a woman and women were you know they they had their days back then so um she was just strong enough to go to him and like the lowest out of all those people, all those people who are walking around, she had the courage and the strength and the faith to go to Jesus. And she touched and he already knew she was coming. So I feel like he healed her because because of how big her faith was, how much she trusted in him to heal her. Because a lot of people didn't know he was God. Mm. And I don't know if she knew he was God, but maybe she did, but she just went to him straight away. And he healed her. So I just feel like it just takes courage and faith um, to go to Jesus. But if you do, you know, he's going to he's going to take your pain away. Um, how did he do that? So how do you tie yourself into that? How, where was the moment where you were broken and you, you came to him? Um, probably back at college yeah. when I was just like there was nothing else I could turn to. Mm-hmm. I feel like, you know, you know, my parents can't save me. My parents can't make this choice for me and at that part like I had to I knew how I had to mature myself and make that decision for myself no matter what else anybody thought about me because going to a Christian school like a Christian school um (laughs) you know (laughs) and having you know a bunch of non-Christian kids who are drowning in their finding of their identity and everything having a hard time finding their identity and you know trying to put on a show for them like I knew I had to stop like Cause they're not about to help me get out with my stuff either. And it was only Jesus. So yeah. Well, thank you, Audie. I appreciate your time and uh, yes. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And your song. And so thanks for what you do. And I'm excited for this weekend. And I, I hope that you're, uh, 
you know, your career in music, it does take off for you and, and you do well and uh, you have amazing gifts and talents. You have an amazing story. So um, you'll Thank definitely you. lead people continue to look up and, and push through the storms in life that you're not, you're not alone. Remember that um, mm-hmm. it's easy to feel that way, but you're not uh, you. You've always had Jesus through there and you're going to have your storms, but Jesus promises us we'll yes, get sir. to the other side. Mm-hmm. Just like you said, yes, it's, yeah. it's going to be easy. John 16, 33 tells us the opposite. He said, you will have trials and sorrows, right. but take heart. I've overcome the world. So uh, he's there for you on the other side. So just keep trusting in him. Seek him first, kid, and you'll do all right. Thank all right. you so much. I'm so excited to come sing with you guys. But I heard.